What's up gamers, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears depth chart in 925 and I want to first and foremost apologize for the delay in getting this video up to you guys. Um, I've been pretty sick this weekend and I've been fighting through it. I got almost all my videos up uh, but I ended up missing the live stream and uh, I ended up missing this morning's video so I want to apologize to you guys for that. Uh, just uh, bear with me and we're gonna get through this so uh, for Chicago I really like Cutler and then McCown uh, so this, the stats don't like McCown's a little bit better of a scrambler uh, but McCutler has way better accuracy uh, deep and short uh, I like his throw power a lot halfback it's really a no-brainer here Matt Forte but the backup halfback uh, I think this Michael Ford guy is a really good spellback but he can't catch as well as Michael Bush, so you can do what you want there. Uh, since we're going to be passing a lot, I'm going to leave Michael Bush, but if you're going to be running a lot, I would suggest Michael Ford. Fullback, we don't really use one uh, in this offense. Wide receivers, uh, remember we're using the Tampa Bay playbook, and uh, I really like these three here. Um, and here's why. And this is, in my opinion, the Bears have one of the best receiver cores in the game. Uh, because look at the catch and traffic at the top three. I mean, that's ridiculous right there when you t when you really think about it. I mean, the, it doesn't really get much better than that. And then they have this guy down here, Marquise Wilson, who's basically a miniature, uh, a poor man's Alshon Jeffrey. So I like to put him at the four slot. And then I'll throw Devin Hester at the six. And then let's just take a look here because we talked about the five wide receiver spot and how we like to put a guy with good hit power tackling there. See Dante Rosario has pretty good hit power, uh, pretty good tackling, so we're going to set him in that five slot. Uh, tight end, it's really a no-brainer here. Martel Smith is phenomenal. Let's take a look at all the good things that he can bring. Uh, he brings, again, more catching, more catching traffic, and more spec catch. Really nothing more you can ask for here. And then remember, we like to put tackles at the backup tight end for the kickoff return team. Uh, linemen, I just leave the linemen as is. Uh, I ought to reorder the depth chart, too, uh, at the beginning. But their offensive line's not too bad. It used to be really bad a, lot, a couple years ago, but it's not that bad in the game, at least. Uh, now, on defense, we're running the 3-3-5, the three, three, and the way I run the 3-3-5 three, three, is I like to have a little bit bigger, stronger guys on the line, and I like to have fast as crap linebackers. So... Uh, what we like to do here is we like to uh, take this guy, Cornelius Washington, and move him up to the number one left end spot. I really like this guy. The only thing he doesn't do well is, I believe it's block shed, right? Yeah, it's only 77, but it's still really pretty good. His hit power is really good. His pass rushing ability is really good. Uh, his zone coverage is even really good. So, I mean, he's a really good defensive end, and that's why I put him on the left end because he's going to be on the right side of the screen, and most of my blitzes are going to be coming off the left edge. Um, so I, I do all that for a reason. Um, the right end, I like to put Henry Melton here. And the reason I like to put Henry Melton is just simply because his pass rushing abilities. Uh, real quick, the backup defensive ends, uh, I probably would just go... I'd probably just go with these two. Um, you could actually... Maybe get. We could maybe get the uh, other guy in here, but I, I like these two. I mean, I don't really do a whole lot with the backups, to be honest. But if I had to go, I would go these two. That's the one thing with the Bears; they just don't have a whole lot of depth. Um, let's take a look at this rookie here real quick. No tackling, decent pass rush. Uh, I probably would go this guy over that guy. Let's see. No, he's got better pass rush. Main thing I look for in the backups is just some kind of outstanding trait that they have that nobody else has. And so you see here, he doesn't trump those two guys, so I leave those two in. Uh, defensive tackle, your nose tackle is going to be your strongest guy. Um, in my opinion, defensive tackles in this year's game, they basically have to stop the inside run on their own. Uh, because we use the pass commit and stuff like that to stop the outside run. This guy right here, Paia, is a really underrated player, I think, in this game. He'll do a great job for us. Um, but as far as, again, backups, they just don't have a whole lot of depth. Uh, but I would just go and take Nate Collins. 
Actually, no, I wouldn't. I would just leave. I'd go Ratliff here, Cohen here, and I would just roll like that. Uh, I'd hope that Paye doesn't get hurt. If Paye gets hurt, you could consider putting um, Ratliff where Melton is and Melton where Ratliff is, but uh, I would hope that he doesn't get hurt. That's kind of the main thing here because they just don't have a whole lot of depth, but they're still pretty good. Uh, left outside linebacker, this is our blitzer on almost all of our blitzes. And so that's why I like to put Julius Peppers here. I mean, you just look, the guy's just a physical beast here. I take a look at all that speed and agility. Um, his hit power is 86. The only thing he's not very good at is black shit. It's pathetic. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I know the Bears were one of the worst teams stopping the run this year. Uh, I don't want to give you the exact statistic because I don't want to get chewed, but uh, they, are, they weren't that great uh, from what I remember. But uh, with that in mind, I like to put him at this position because he's gonna. That side is very protective because you're blitzing a lot and you have that cornerback down in the box to help you out. So um, I like to leave this guy in here at the left outside linebacker here, Julius Peppers, middle linebacker. Uh, they don't have Brian Urlacher anymore. Uh, so what I like to do is is it Demario? Is it James? Let's take a look and compare these guys because I always go back and forth when I do these depth charts with these guys. Let's sort them by speed. So uh, I'll just look at all these characteristics here and see who's the best guy. Uh, I know Lance Briggs is probably the best linebacker. It's not really a no-brainer. It's the top three here that we're looking at mainly. Oh, look at this guy here, 82 tackling. Let's move him to where Lance Briggs is, just so we can compare him as well. So, we see here hit power. They both have really good hit power. All, the, all three of these guys have really good hit power. Uh, power moves. Anderson has really good finesse moves. Block shed. They, none of them have good block shed except Lance Briggs. Pursuit. They all have pretty good pursuit. Uh, DJ Williams wins that. Uh, he also wins the hit power and the play wreck. Zone coverage, he beats everybody except Anderson. Press, he does actually pretty good in. So with all that in mind, I would, I probably am going to go with DJ Williams here. Uh, he's got 76 strength, which isn't that bad. His block shed's pathetic, but they're all bad at that. So I would say he's the best option. And then followed by Anderson, Bostic, and then I would say... Um, I would leave that Franklin guy in. He looked pretty decent. Uh, right outside linebacker is going to be Lance Briggs. Now, remember what we like to do here is we like to take our backup linebackers, put in our guys with the best hit power. So, Julius Peppers, and uh, we'll put him at the backup R-O-O-B. Uh, we'll put in Boss at the backup middle, and we'll put in... Uh, we'll put in Briggs, right? No, we'll put in Williams. DJ Williams there. Okay, and then we'll just back everybody up with Anderson. He's actually not that bad of a linebacker. Um, so moving on, uh, what we like to do at the corners is the second string corner is our – he can kind of be a little bit weak just because of where he's at on the field for us. Uh, but the third string corner, I like to put in a really strong safety um, because he's down in the box and it just helps out the run defense a little bit. So what I like to do to start is I like to go over to zone coverage and just kind of look at all the guys that can cover in zone. So here we got Kelvin Hayden. And that threshold is kind of 80-ish. So Kelvin Hayden could cover well in zone. Okay, now we want to look at uh, tackling. So we see we have some pretty decent tacklers in here. Um, let's take a look down here at these safeties. We've got two really good ones. Major right uh, is probably going to be that. Let's see which one of these three is a really good. This guy Craig Stelt has terrible coverage. Wow. If only he had a little higher coverage, I'd play him in a minute. So it looks like. Wow, this guy's pretty good, though, for what we're going to ask him to do. I mean, he's blitzed at almost every play. I, I really want to play him. Because we run the two men under, he's not in the coverage because we're blitzing him. 
But when we run the one five five, I guess he would be in coverage. All right. Uh, so with all that in mind, I'll probably just take. I'll probably just put in. Really want to put in Tillman there. Like that would leave me weak and vulnerable everywhere everywhere else. Um. Let's see. Probably going to leave. That would be really good, though, because you could have the coverage of Tillman and the... You still have that block shed ability, and you could put those two bigger guys on the outside. These two guys are here. They could tackle really well. That's what we'll do. The only thing I don't like is that Hayden can't cover in man. So, actually, let's just leave Hayden in the slot, because he'll still be fine. I'm, the only thing that... Actually, no, 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 what we'll do is this. We'll take uh, Hayden, we'll put him at the free safety. Okay, so they already did that for us. Then we got Major right there, and then we'll throw the other guy down here. So, let's find him. I think it's Walters. So, he's got 66 tackle, 62 blocks. That's pretty comparable to everybody else. Uh, 57 man... I don't really like that at all, but we'll have to deal with that. So we'll put Walters there at the three slot. And let's just check here. So that's what we'll do. And then, uh, just like we talked about earlier, or a couple videos back, just to the safeties, I like to go. The second string safety has your uh, hardest hit power guys. So Major Wright and Craig Stelts. And then I just leave. Hayden at the free safety, major right at the strong, uh, kicker, just go with the best overall guy. Uh, Devin Hester here, uh, the best returner in the game in my opinion. I think he's even better than uh, some of the other guys, but um, that's what I think. So we'll just go like that, and uh, that's our Chicago Bears depth chart, guys. Thanks for watching. If this video uh, was beneficial to you, uh, just let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it, and uh, let me know if you have any discrepancies and how you would set up the Bears for the Nickel 335 and the Tampa Bay Playbook. Thanks for your time. Guys, I will have all the videos up today. It will just be a little bit later than normal, so bear with me. But all the videos will be up today, and thank you so much for your patience, and I'll talk to you guys later.